health professionals, it's important we educate our staff and put value on them being cognizant of diversity and inclusiveness. We want them to understand what some clients may have been through. We want to highlight the unconscious privilege that we have as health professionals in that space. We put a very strong focus on putting people at the centre of their care. This helps us to see the whole person and all their diversity. We feel here at Max that diversity and in delivering inclusive services is really part of our DNA. And for us, diversity is not just about culture. It's about a whole range of things that are important to that person. We have people from 66 different cultural backgrounds living with us, and we have an absolute zero tolerance for prejudice in any form. We are inclusive and welcoming of different cultures, languages, traditions and religions. We understand, welcome and embrace differences. At AMCS, the management and leadership of the organisation have made a very strong commitment to diversity and inclusion. If we say we are committed to migrant communities, what does that mean in a practical sense? Do we walk the talk and do we do uh, what we say we do in an authentic and genuine way. When somebody comes to us, we try to get to know that person. Not everybody has the same life story, so it's about understanding that person's journey and how they came to be with us. Yes, they are with us for a particular reason. It's usually a health reason, but that's not what's made them who they are. It's about understanding their life journey, so we want to know about everybody as individuals. You hear some beautiful stories, some fantastic stories, but not everybody has had an easy life. Not everybody has been able to be their true self their whole life. Our diversity and inclusion strategy and board engagement have helped us to strengthen our focus and be more responsive to our clients, their diversity and what's important to them. We have created diversity action plans which help us at a practical level to identify the gaps and what the needs are that need to be addressed. For example, we were able to identify that little work has been undertaken within the organisation to make the environment culturally safe and responsive for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. We undertook an environmental scan of what different areas of the organisation had done and we created a plan with specific actions. These included engaging with the local community through flag raising events, staff training and developing connections with the local Aboriginal community controlled organisation, the Monash Health Aboriginal team and local Aboriginal community support workers. Connecting with these organisations was important as it increased their awareness that we could provide services for Aboriginal people in the community. It led to some increased referrals and we want to build on this. One of our aims is to ensure people can access a service close to home that acknowledges and responds to their cultural and health needs. Quality improvement and resident feedback have always been important to us. We don't want to wait until accreditation to find out there is something wrong. We also want our residents to know that they get to have a say. This is their home. This was the approach we took when we started out on the Rainbow Tick journey. We surveyed all the residents because we thought, given their age and a lot of their experiences, that they may have had some objections. We told them this was a journey we were going on. Did they support that journey? Were they comfortable with it? And if not, why not? We were completely amazed. We didn't get any residents who said, we do not support that journey. Most of our residents are people in their 80s and 90s and we probably had the wrong assumption that they wouldn't support the journey. But they did, and their responses were things were like, we love living here, why shouldn't everybody be free to live here? We probably didn't realise that a percentage of our resident population was from the LGBTI community, and that they just hadn't felt at home or at ease enough to share that with us. So going through that journey also made them more at home, and some people actually did feel safe enough to come out. Our main services focus on supporting seniors from diverse cultural backgrounds with practical assistance and care so they can continue living in their own homes. To do this effectively and equitably, we need to understand the social demographics of our communities, how they are likely to change over time, and how we need to adapt our services to suit them. 
we monitor the Bureau of Statistics information and make sure that every employee here that needs that information has a summary of the top 150 languages spoken in Victoria and Australia. We don't just check country of birth or language, we actually look at both. We also access other data as well, uh, current service access, English language fluency, level of care support, and how many people within certain communities do not access or use the internet. If the data tells um, that a particular community isn't accessing the internet, that informs how we develop communication for those communities and what's appropriate. We monitor and check multicultural community directories to ensure that we know what community groups are out there. This also helps with our community engagement and communication approaches. Our director and CEO really provide the drive for our business. If you don't have the drive from above, the chances of succeeding in creating an inclusive environment, culturally responsive care or achieving the rainbow tick are very low. This culture and inclusive approach must be supported and driven from above, and for that then to flow through to everybody in the business. I think it's also vital that the leaders here at MAX value and empower staff and learn from them their skills and experiences. We respect people's connection to their culture and will take cultural advice when it is offered. We think we're creating an environment without a hierarchy. If we are in a situation where someone comes in and needs our care and we don't have the knowledge or that deep understanding of that culture or that community, then we'll, we would be out tracking down the leaders in that community and arrange a meeting to upskill ourselves and make sure we are able to do the very best for that person. What may suit one person will not suit another person from another culture. <laughs>